Hello everyone and welcome again to a short stop with a short stop. Today we're going to talk about something that not too many people want to talk about. And that is hell. For an athlete that plays in a team sport, what's one of the worst things that you could possibly do to him or her? And that would be to put them on the bench and take away their playing time. Sometimes it's maybe because of a mistake that they've made or errors that they continue to make. They're not playing very good and the coach decides to bench them and play somebody else. But they're paying for their mistakes. Or they, they could have actually done something uh, morally wrong or uh, said something bad to their teammate or disrespected the coach and they could have paid for a mistake of, of that nature and be put on the bench and get their playing time taken away. That's one of the worst things that can happen to an athlete. But now what about Pete Rose? What's one of the worst things could possibly happen to him? And that would be not to be elected to the Hall of Fame. You know, Pete made a mistake. <clears throat> he may have made a lot of mistakes, but one mistake that he made was betting on baseball. And he's still paying for that mistake today. Every Monday night <clears throat> for six years, I went to a federal prison in Martin County, Kentucky and conducted a Bible study there. And these people were there because of mistakes that they had made. Ninety percent of them that were there were what they called lifers, <clears throat> and they were there for the rest of their life. But they had made some mistakes and they were paying for them. You know, Pete Rose probably had more, well, no, not probably, he did. He had more hits than anybody else. He had more plate appearances than anybody else. He had more at bats than anybody else, but yet he's not in the Hall of Fame. But back to the prison, you know, there was four people that I got to know there fairly well. Uh, two of them were members of the church, or, were, yeah, were, were members of the Church of Christ. Uh, one was from Florence, Kentucky. Uh, and the other one was from Tennessee. The one from Florence, Kentucky, ended up telling me why he was there, and it was from cheating on his income tax. But for him cheating on his income tax, he was paying a, a price. And the other one was, uh, he was actually a deacon in the Church of Christ, and when he got there, he, he was a song leader. He helped lead songs for us. But he did the same exact thing. He cheated on his income tax, and he was paying a price for that. But there was a, a third one that was from Florence, Kentucky also. And there's an independent baseball team there in Florence, Kentucky. And sometimes if you drive down I-75, you look over there, there's a stadium there. And he was the owner of that team. But he had embezzled $4 million. But he was in jail. And I was conducting a Bible study with him, but yet he was paying a price for it. Fortunately... Over the time, we baptized 15 people that were in that uh, facility, and we were very glad that we did that. But every single one of them was there for a reason. It was because they had made a mistake. Now, as I was looking at this place, every time that I walked in it, there was doors that closed behind me, and they just made a, a thud like a a hollow house when when it, these steel doors would shut, it would just boom. Yeah, it would just echo through the halls. And after I was there for the first year, I, I said there couldn't be any place worse that a person can be than this jail. But then I started thinking as I was reading the Bible, what is hell really like? And it says, but when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom and prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Naked and you clothed me. 
I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, did we not see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you not or naked and not clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and, and come to you? The king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do these to one of my brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. Then he will say also, Say to those on the left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they themselves also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly, I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, and the righteous will inherit eternal life. Hell is real. There's no doubt about it. The, the Bible talks about it. Jesus talks about it. And hell is a, a literal place. In Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 and 15, it says that it is a lake of fire. And in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 30, it says it's a place of outer darkness. Now, if there's a fire there, how could there be outer darkness? If you ever watch any of the stock car races, those guys are pouring fuel into their car. And sometimes that uh, gasoline catches on fire. But when it does, there's no flame. And usually, most of the time, we'll see a flame whenever there's a fire. But with this type of gasoline, there's no, no flame to it at all. So it's, in hell, it's going to be dark, but yet there's going to be fire. But it's not going to be lighting up hell. In Matthew chapter 8, and verse 12, it says there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Man, I can't hardly envision that. That, that, that just sounds like the most depressing place that I've ever heard of. And then... Hell is no place of rest. In Revelation 14, 11, it says there's going to be torment forever. And that's not just for a day or two. Whenever you have a, uh, a sore tooth or maybe a, a sore knee or a back or something, and it may ache for a couple of days and goes away. But in hell, it is going to be eternal. It's never going to stop. There's not going to be any time. It's just going to go on and on and on and on. Hell is a place for the wicked. Now, when I was in the prison, there was a lot of wicked people there that had done a lot of wicked things. But in hell, in Matthew 25 and verse 41, it's the devil and his angels are going to be there. And I can't think of any more wicked person than the devil himself. All the things that he tries to get other people to do just to go and be in hell with him. In 1 Peter chapter 4, and verses 17 and 18, it says, All evil of all ages. That means from the very beginning of time, those people that were evil and didn't obey God are going to be with, with those people that are in hell. And those are the type of people I don't want to be around, don't want to be with. And I realize sometimes we don't want to talk about hell. We don't want to hear the negative. We always want to hear the positive. But there's so much in the Bible on hell, and Jesus talks about it a lot. So it, it's a subject that needs to be understood. And when we understand it, we, we need to understand that it's not a place that we want to go. Turn me, with me to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. And it says, But the cowardly and the unbelieving, the abominable and murderers, and immoral persons, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. There's one word there that I want to pick out, and it says, all the unbelieving. And my instincts and my heart 
and my soul wants everybody in the world to believe in Jesus Christ and become a Christian so that one place that they will never, ever have to go is hell. Because Jesus has pre prepared another place for us, and that's heaven. That's where I want myself to go, my family to go, but I want you to go there also. But how do we do that? First of all, we got to hear the word, which you're hearing now. Secondly, we got to believe. We got to believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. We've got to repent of our sins, which is taking a 180 degree turn from the Think from the bad things that we're doing in our life so that we don't have to pay for our mistakes. Then we have to confess Jesus before men because he says if we'll confess him, he'll confess us before his Father in heaven. And lastly but not leastly, we need to be baptized for the remission of our sins so that we can have an opportunity to come into contact with the blood of Christ. And then when we do that, we live our lives uh, uh, the way he wants us to in Revelation 2.10, be faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of righteousness. Don't pay a price for the mistakes that you made. Become a Christian and be in heaven. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.